I mean, I've got a glass here of whiskey and OJ because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm celebrating the life of Wiz Khalifa right now. I've got a little warm bottle of Berliner Kind here that I bought from the uh, River, River, have you pronounced it, the supermarket in Berlin. And a few others in the back there, as you can see, that are going to get consumed later on tonight when I meet my the rest of my friends. But for now, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, so I'm going to do a bit of, um, what am I doing in Berlin, if you're wondering, actually? Let me just update you on that one. So I come to Berlin quite often. As you are well aware, having uh, tuned into this lovely podcast, I am a very big fan of club culture, very big fan of dance culture, very big fan of DJing, very big fan of electronic music. And um, most of the best places to go and experience those said things is none other than berlin i think probably london comes a close second or we're probably tied with amsterdam maybe i don't know i would say i don't know what you guys think or maybe another city in the uk or maybe some of you more experienced clubbers out there would probably say a place like georgia um, maybe ukraine maybe moscow i heard the scene there's pretty cool uh, maybe poland krakow I heard is popping as well now there's loads of spots popping up and obviously in portugal lisbon porto there's stuff happening there too um, but for me in terms of just um an all-encompassing experience somewhere where you can go and see a whole variety variety of DJs, not variety of sounds maybe it's only probably <coughs> sorry it's only maybe slight i'd put against berlin it's that it's quite it's, it's all samey right there's not many different sounds uh out there for the most part it's all different kind of djs approaching it in a different way which is also a challenge right because mostly it's also mostly techno everywhere here prides itself on being like the home of it's prize it's, it's basically the home of techno right so um uh, second only to maybe detroit uh, which is obviously the birthplace of techno but in terms of just what techno culture has kind of to has kind of uh, formed into nowadays with you know techno tourism like me how's I've, i'm a victim of it i would say berlin's the best example of it but on one hand you would say it's probably a good thing that they just concentrate on techno because it means if you're like a i don't know a bar dj around here like a lower level dj you're gonna have to be at a really good level to keep pace with everyone else that's gonna be you're competing with right so i'm assuming their local djs in berlin must be insanely good because everyone else is really good that's how it usually happens right iron sharpens iron but then on the same token i also think for a club goer there also must be a bit of fatigue when you go out like you've you've seen how many more uh ben clock type sets do you need to see from like some random dude or girl you don't know Probably not, you know, you probably can't tap out once you've done it once already. So it might be that is plays a part in it. But overall, I think if you want to come somewhere where uh, I've already got, I wish I bring my allergy tablets, man. That's the like you look outside, right? It's really cold. It's not. It's not that warm. But then for some reason, my science is always flare up. Maybe it's the altitude as well. I might ha um, add to it as well. And I'm guessing drinking these sugary drinks isn't going to help either. But you know, you gotta do. What you gotta do. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, I think in terms of just an, an all-in package deal, if you want to come here and see a bit of culture, because I always say to my friends, I think a few of my friends were a bit worried about coming here, and they don't want to get lost in the source, right? That's a common thing that happens to people that come to Berlin. You come to Berlin, you get a little bit, you know, because they're, they're very lax when it comes to the drugs and the drinking, you know, for the most part. You're allowed to drink out on the street and open. You know, if you're if you're an American, you'll probably be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, and there's no carrying around stuff like this in like paper bags. No one gives a shit. Just drink on the street. Obviously, don't be a dick. There's also a bit more of there's a bit more um, uh, politeness and awareness of the people around you. Like I, I've I've rarely, if ever, I've never seen a fight since I've been in Berlin. Never. And I'm sure if if you've been in most metropolitan cities around Europe or even some places in America, you can't go a week without seeing somebody. You know either sh get into a shouting match or actually physically assaulting each other so that kind of helps uh but i always tell my friends who are worried about coming that even though you can get lost in the source you can come in and just kind of go, go crazy and you know do everything and go see everything and touch everyone you can also come in and just have a real cool sightseeing trip there's loads of cool uh places to go and visit uh you can go and visit loads of cool art galleries. They have loads of them around here. Obviously, you got to pay for them. So, like in London, where most of them are free, so you got to pay for quite a few of them. You can see, uh, you can see, but yeah, loads of art galleries, loads of cool cultural points. There's the shopping here is not too bad either. There's great vintage shopping. The vintage shopping is probably some of the best you've probably seen in the world, really. I think, especially the kilo stuff that you can get. You kind of go to a shop where you you can put fill stuff in, fill stuff up to a kilo or put stuff into a basket and they weigh in and you pay for that usually the stuff is fairly priced because basically in berlin for the most part people get by 
mostly by buying secondhand clothes. There are there is a small contingent of people who are into fashion, but for the most part, people don't really dress to impress in Berlin. They just dress to kind of you know express their individuality. So there's loads of mad shit you'll find in vintage shops just coming. And it, and I'm guessing maybe because Germany's landlocked. They get stuff coming from all over the place, right? Really cool stuff that pops into their charity shops and vintage shops. So there's never a shortage of wild finds you'll be able to get from Berlin. Um, and yeah, loads of stuff in between as well. The, oh, the food scene's really good. It's been popping up for a while. I think if you've watched any of the Munchies videos from the last few years, you would have seen a, a, a bit more of an extensive uh, look at what Berlin does in terms of the food. One blog actually that I really like that's a good option of it. It's this blog called... Uh, I think it's called Berlin Berlin Food Stories. Actually, they've got an Instagram. Actually, that's really cool. I'll show you that. Uh, let me yeah, let me get it up on here. Berlin Food Stories. It's a really cool little Instagram page that kind of you know highlights some of the best places to go out and eat in Berlin. And yeah, those things are popping up all over the place. And there's a real good appreciation for like the Turkish culture here because you know I think Turkey basically Turkish people make up the highest the largest majority of immigrants I think for the most part in Berlin. Um, the cuisine they have like if you've been to a kebab shop in London and you think you've you know you've done all the kebabs in the world. And you think you've aced it, you think you know what you're talking about, you need to come to London. I mean, you need to come to Berlin for sure. The kebabs here are just in another level. Or the kebabish or the kebab stores or the Turkish restaurants are just in another level. You get people that cook stuff that's region specific. You get people that cook stuff that's from a certain area or a certain time period. It's just insane the level of the attention and care that goes in. Just like um, imagine your local uh top kebab in like dawson right and they're just cooking like michelin star level food every night for like drunk partners like me and you it's insane to see um so this is the website i'm talking about uh, i'll put it up on here on the screen for you guys to see if you're watching via the youtubes so this is it berlin food stories right it's a cool little blog this guy runs it um and he goes around reviewing all these cool places in berlin to go eat at and the instagram page is pretty popping too because he highlights loads of places as well shares the videos and clips on there and again i think it gives you a good, different idea of what Berlin's about and i'm sure sure this guy's a dad and he's got kids and stuff so he's able to kind of have a pretty cool experience being in berlin so i'm sure for those of you that aren't into techno and don't care share about electronic music and don't want to do drugs and don't want to drink you can also come to berlin and just you know pig out on some amazing burgers and you know asian food noodles all that stuff obviously the standard curry works um but loads of cool stuff you can find when you're in berlin and i rec really recommend coming because um, again it's a cheap holiday uh it's not far the, the the flight i took this morning was what an hour and a half if that getting into the city center where i am now i'm near uh well i'm not gonna say where i'm near but anyway i'm i'm, I'm in a city center somewhere and it takes like i don't know 40 minutes on the public transport 20 minutes on the on an uber you pay like 20 euros pretty cool pretty calm isn't it so yeah that's what i'm doing i'm here specifically to go to Bergheim on sunday of course church ah, i'm gonna go to Bergheim on sunday that should be flipping amazing let me actually see what people are up to in Bergheim now because i always like to check the Bergheim location on instagram it's a very underrated thing actually i'm not sure people use it as much as i do but if you're going to a new city and you don't know what and you want to check out a certain thing like you know i think the, the routine before that i used to do uh, or my workflow prior to kind of find out what was the real vibe of a place was to go on TripAdvisor and go on like the newest r reviews. Sometimes when you, when you search for a place on TripAdvisor, it usually gives you the most recommended reviews or average reviews, or whatever. But if you want to really get the heart of it, click newest and it will sort all the ones that people literally went there the, the other day and they'll give you the real news. But nowadays, I tend to go on Instagram and just search the location. Like if it's been geotagged, uh, you can search for on Instagram in the search bar, even on the app or on the, web, on the website, and then it comes up and you can just basically see people's stories that they've up uploaded, tagging the place, or just the posts that they've made. And then, of course, you can kind of go on there and kind of creep on their, on their caption, read their comments and see what they actually thought of the place. And you can actually get a fair, a, you can get a fair impression, a much fairer impression of where you're going as opposed to reading a Google review or wherever it may be in it. As because I think they're meant to be impartial, but you know, come on, if someone's paying you to eat at a restaurant, you're not going to say it was shit, really. So these are some of the top posts. Let's quickly go through some of the Bergheim stories people put up. So yeah, um, I think everyone's come, coming to see the same people. I think Dr. Rubenstein uh, playing on Saturday, uh, Tin Man after in Bergheim. Then you've got Nazir. Can you, can you stop that? Pause there. Nazir, Boris, obviously. Um, Bergheim resident, Marcel Dietman. Uh, devious one and Neil, so that should be flipping cool. And yeah, people posting pictures of themselves outside of Berkeley. It's pretty. I think it's maybe a bit easier, probably less of a problem to do it outside of the building. 
Because I always, I don't know, there's part of me that always thought that if you went to Burkhardt and you took a picture outside, that somehow the staff in there would see it and kind of take it, take it, you know, make make a note of it so that when you came in next time, then then now you're at the door. But I guess, you know, it's a public space. You can't take a picture inside, obviously, because it's basically a private property, but outside is you're more than welcome to. But I still wouldn't anyway, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, loads of cool pictures, of course. You get to see what the actual building itself looks like. It's going to open later on tonight. Ragazzi, Davide, these two girls probably won't get in. Ragazzi, <laughs> Davide è tornato intero, quasi, quasi intero. Non si dà per gaina. Fair play. You got some obvious pictures of people walking around. So, yeah, that should be fun. So, it's a video inside. Oh, it's gonna go straight away, isn't it? Naughty, naughty, naughty. Yeah, you should, you should do that. You should not do that. But yeah, you do find a few people take pictures of them. Oops, get out of here. People take pictures of themselves inside the club. And usually, if you're quick enough and you spot it, you, you can see a member of the Bergheim team, social media team, like getting into the comments and basically tell them, hey, we delete that picture now. If they can't DM them with their private account, they'll probably comment and say, hey, DM them or whatever. And just take it down and you know remove that stuff instantly. So they they they, they do they do go they do a good job of policing it, and I think the community does as well. To be honest, we do kind of band around and you know if we see people taking a piss and then invading other people's privacy, then you know fuck that shit. Yeah, loads of cool pictures of people hanging around. But yeah, that should be cool. I cannot wait to go. So that's that's happening later on. Uh, Berghain, what else I'm gonna do? See a lot of friends that live here too. During the whole, like, uh, there was a big migration out of London. I think maybe that might have been, what, like, five years ago or five to ten years ago. A lot of, a lot of people left and went to, like, uh, no, so a lot of people left and went outside of London, right? They went to places like, I don't know, Bristol, you know, Brighton, uh, what's that other place called? Hastings, Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds. A lot of people going to Leeds, but there was a few braver souls, especially some of the... Um, how you say them? Especially some of the people who were like maybe a little bit lost in the source in London decided to go to like Berlin to go and rave. I was like, Jesus Christ, you guys are brave. But some of them have done pretty well for themselves. So I'm probably going to be a few of them up later on today. And then that'll be it really. Um, just, you know, have a dance and stuff. And again, like I've been here a few times, so I don't really get as crazy as I used to in the past. You know, it's not like the biggest deal in the world to me. And obviously, with the older you get as well, it, t it tends to just turn into like a real good clubbing experience as opposed to like a time for you to like, you know, turn into another Project X event. But, you know, 